why do you call pornography real? Like most of the, most people will describe it as, as the opposite. No, I think it's incredibly real. Do you mean it's one of the realest things that most people have access to oh, in terms of their God. visceral reaction? The juicy pussy and the hard on dick are real. But their images and their reenactments. Yeah, but they're, they're real. super normal. No, no, they're real. I mean, you, you cannot fuck a woman if you're a porn star unless you're actually turned on by her. You can't fuck her otherwise. Whereas if you if you're an actor in a movie, even if you kiss the actress, you don't kiss her at all the way you would kiss a person you would love. You can just pretend you do that. That's the beauty of theater. So theater works completely with representation of something it represents. But the realness of pornography is what's interesting with it. In that sense, pornography is the same thing as, say, watching ISIS slowly slaughter somebody who, mm. not, who actually dies, okay? That is called pathical narrative. And I think we have replaced the pathical narrative actually seeing real murders. We used to go to hangings in the past and shear right. them on when somebody was executed, right? Now, when that disappeared and we stopped killing people, and you know, at least we lynched mobbed a little less, with the exception of Adolf Hitler, then we instead moved to something like pornography. And at the end of the day, I prefer pornography over violence in, in the proper sense, because I think, but I think the sum of sex and violence in any given society is a constant. Byung Chul Han, the Korean philosopher has written a lot about this and he's absolutely right. And that means that the violence cannot be hidden. And if the violence isn't out there in the open, it probably returns as a super ego injunction inside of the citizens themselves. That means a lot of young guys today are their own worst enemies mm -hmm. because they take out the violence on themselves. And what I recommend those guys to do when I see that pattern is martial arts, please. <laughs> Here's a card. Here's a friend. He does martial arts. Go there, train martial arts. Get it out and be violent with other guys, but in a controlled setting where you don't actually kill them but you feel what it means to actually kill another guy. And next, go hunting, <laughs> kill animals, because you can kill animals, that's not illegal. And you also understand what proper violence is, and you don't have to be that massively violent against yourself otherwise. So it's the same thing with violence and with sex. These are pathical energies, incredibly human. Machines will never understand them, and AI will never understand pathos. Mm. That's why an AI will not crack a joke. That's why an AI will not want to fuck. An AI will not do any of these pathical things. But the pathical things are more human than ever and will become more important to us in an increasingly intelligent surrounding that we'll live in. So the more AI we have around us, the more we'll think, okay, in what way I'm I different from the machine? It's one of the, it's one of the major questions of Sadiqis of my philosophy. In what way is man different from machine? And our answer to that is that man is pathical. And machine is strictly logical. But because man is both pathical and logical, machine is only logical. Only man can understand mythical. Because mythical is the merger, or the attempt to merger, logical and pathical, which still, again, machine cannot understand. Machine can only ever do logical operations. It can do so quickly, efficiently, but it can't do anything else. We haven't invented any machines that have done anything close or reminiscent of the mythical or the pathical. Those are exclusive realms for humans still.